somewhere between science and superstition, there is another world. The world of darkness. Nobody expected it. Nobody believed it. And nothing could stop it. There are no experts. You probably know as much about possession as most priests. Look, your daughter doesn't say she's a demon. She says she's the devil himself. I'm telling you that that thing upstairs isn't my daughter. Now, I want you to tell me that you know for a fact that there's nothing wrong with my daughter except in her mind. You tell me you know for a fact that an exorcism wouldn't do any good. You tell me that! The one hope. The only hope. The exorcist. They're coming to get you. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming to get you. Coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome back to They're Coming to Get You. I'm one of your hosts, Brent Trahune. I'm joined by Gavin Eddings. Hello. Episode two. Let go. Uh, we, by this point, we've already signed a deal with a major podcasting network. Uh, unfortunately, that podcasting network is Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, he, he's paying us well. Uh, we just have to spread misinformation. <laughs> hey, whatever uh, gets me a check, I don't care at this point, Gavin. Yeah, I'll uh, sell out. I, I would like to sell out, please. Hello. <laughs> I would. Uh, hello. Is, it, is anybody hiring for a sellout? Please, I would God. Like- <laughs> Well, Ed, uh, th- thanks for your positive feedback on the Halloween episode. We enjoyed uh, recording it, and uh, we appreciate uh, all your kind words on that. Please uh, yeah. tell a friend, let us know, and, g- and give us a review on uh, wherever reviews are made. Please do that. It <laughs> wherever, helps. Yelp, uh, your Uber Eats app. Go yep. ahead and just, just open Uber Eats right now. <laughs> Leave a review. Uh, but it's, it's fitting uh, today because we can see our breath in the air. We've got the room, uh, the temperature turned down to 30 degrees, and we've got uh, both uh, Both of us have glasses of pea soup. Yeah, because we're talking about Emerald Lagasse. We're talking <laughs> about food and cooking. No, today we're talking about what at the time was probably the most evil movie ever made. People thought this movie was demonic. They thought this movie was pure evil, a work of the devil, we're talking about The Exorcist. Um, and so initial thoughts, because this was not like a, like, like last week with Halloween. That was kind of from childhood. I liked this. Movie, and it was interesting. I told my mom, uh, we're doing this podcast and one of the, we're starting off with uh, The Exorcist for one of the first episodes. And she goes, oh, yeah, I, uh, I showed your brother that movie. And uh, thanks for bringing him up, by the way. Uh, my, my brother died and that is going to be a running joke on this podcast is whenever somebody brings up my brother who will be me, I will say, thanks for bringing him up. But, uh, my mom said, yeah, my brother, uh, your brother made me turn it off. And I said, well, how old was he? And she goes, oh, eight, eight, (laughs) eight Eight years old. Eight's a little young to be watching the exorcist. I finally watched this movie all the way through in the theater back in 2018 was the oh, first so time I, you were late to the party yeah and I, because, I was late too but you were later <laughs> i was later i'm so 2000 and late uh but 2000 I, and late teen oh god me boom roasted i did i did but i i finally watched this in 2018 in the theater and it it, it did not scare me but this is an incredible movie just the characters the pacing the story it is just a great film Mm -hmm. like i don't want to get too hoity-toity and be like it's a film Mm -hmm. me and my girlfriend stephanie argue about the difference between like movie and film all the time uh because she can be a little bit uh a little bit pretentious 
mm-hmm. about things. She enjoys Wes Anderson. Enough okay. said. Enough said. But we argue about film and movies, but The Exorcist is definitely high art as yeah. as as a horror movie. What well, yeah, one of my favorite films is The Exorcist. Another one of my favorite films is Fast and the Furious. <laughs> <laughs> my I think my favorite art house movie is Face Off with yeah. Nicolas Cage. Just the way they take their faces off, really. <laughs> It really is a good metaphor for who we are hiding ourselves from being. Yes, and sir. And this is a great film. Great uh, film. I will say The Exorcist is not one of my favorite movies. It's not a go-to for me. Um, but I, if, if somebody said, this is the scariest movie of all time, I couldn't disagree with you. I couldn't either. I, it just had such a profound effect on the zeitgeist. Uh, you had the satanic panic 10 years before the satanic panic actually happened because the exorcist people you hear the stories you you see the headlines like people fainting in the aisle Mm -hmm. people just being so people having to pray and all the protests by the catholic church and just as this movie was being released it's based on a book a lot of love know that but it's based on a book but people had problems with the exorcist because of the content that that it was portraying a uh, book written by William Peter Blatty and the 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 script screenplay or whatever you would call it is also written by William Peter Blatty, uh, released in 1973 and directed by William. It's the Friedkin Weekend. About to have me some fun. <laughs> what are you? I like the way you just became a radio DJ. Like it's a Friedkin Weekend here. It's, I'm um, about to have me some pea soup. <laughs> <laughs> we got the prizes the crazy all memorial day weekend baby what up burr, burr, burr. we got mattresses <laughs> half off come on down see me um and now it's it's at up the top of this uh we we have to discuss uh which version you saw which version versus the version i i watched i i have excess one two and three on regular dvd uh it's it's not been one where i've like gotta have it on blu-ray but <laughs> Uh, I, I watched the version. It was the, uh, the version you've not, you, you've not seen before, whatever it's called. It essentially it's added 10 to 12 minutes of new footage. And that was, yeah, that was released in 2000. Uh, and the original one, 1973, 120 minutes, 22 minutes, 2,132 minutes. So the version I saw in theater was this director's cut because the director's cut this version that you've never seen before Mm -hmm. has kind of become like the version when you buy it on blu-ray or dvd usually that's the version you're getting now Mm -hmm. they they have some extra shots of pazuzu there's more shots with like the test testing that's done on reagan that's very upsetting and we'll get to it Mm -hmm. but they 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 they, they add a little bit more to it The, the spider walk scene the spider walk scene that everybody said that they had seen or was creeped out by, that's actually missing from the theatrical version. So that's probably what is that the Mandela effect kind of where you're, I, you're like, oh yeah, I saw that in the original somehow. We saw that cut. Like we talked about on one of your field trip episodes. Yeah, the Mandela effect of like, I saw, I remember the version of Reservoir Dogs that I saw where I <laughs> I, I, I watched him rob the bank. Yeah. But, <laughs> But yeah, the spider walk scene, which is one of the most iconic scenes in the movie, was added in mm-hmm. that uh, director's cut. I believe, I, I, I say that I'm 99% sure it wasn't in the original version, or at least not the prolonged version that you see now. Yeah, and and I, I also clarify, again, this wasn't one of my movies that I had to watch and I've seen a billion times. So I'm sure there's somebody that has stumbled across this episode that will yell at their their uh car or whatever being like that's incorrect that's that, not right well it's I, going to happen so it's gonna happen we are we, we are not experts we're, we're, we're just two goofs making some jokes about horror movies <laughs> into microphone because we are white guys and we deserve to have a podcast <laughs> and on this show we we'd actually would be called uh hex Burts, gavin oh i get it that's cute i like that it's the friedkin weekend <laughs> That doesn't make any. <laughs> what if that's how he's introduced? Be like, hey, here, here's my buddy. It's William Freaking Weekend. Yeah, about to have me some pea soup. Uh, budget ball. budget was twelve million dollars, and the box office was four hundred and forty-one million dollars. So mm. they made some scratch on this. 
<laughs> they made some scratch on this demon movie. That and I is think for sure. I think box off that's over like the re-releases and stuff. So they they made their money on this movie for sure. Um, initial thoughts, uh, Gavin, of because this is one of those movies where you can kind of see the movie without actually ever seeing the movie. It's mm-hmm. been parodied enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's in pop culture. I think uh, I know Richard Pryor had a bit about The Exorcist, maybe, or it was uh, Eddie Murphy. You know, something is it's so popular in the zeitgeist when a comedian will have like a bit about that. And it's like a super famous comedian, you know? Y'all ever see The Exorcist? Uh, <laughs> that, that's how I start every one of my sets, actually. I uh, remember Richard Pryor when uh, one of his jokes is like, when she's, he's like, hello and he's like goodbye <laughs> of course the, the take is black people don't play around with that shit and, <laughs> and you know what uh this white guy doesn't either so i think yeah so everybody knows the big scenes the head spinning the the vomit the the, the, the vomiting the piece of the spider walk which wasn't mm-hmm. added till the year 2000 uh the, the year 2000 um and just the constant, just all the vulgarity and people, the, the levitating and the floating. Those are the scenes, you know, when you think of The Exorcist. And then there's also 125 minutes of movie that, <laughs> that are not parodied. It is a very slow movie. It's very slow because it's not like she opens a box and it's like, you got a demon in you now. Yeah. There's a long drawn out process trying to figure out what is wrong with this little girl. At, at, at the core of this movie, it is a mother worrying about her daughter being sick. Mm-hmm. And it, it just happens to be about uh you got the devil in you girl. <laughs> yeah. And they and just the tests that they put her through to try to figure it out and going to the priest and it it, it, it takes a long way before we're spinning heads around and bombing in pea soup. Yeah, and it was, you know, it ramps up. The, the the mom's like, you know, we've got rats in the attic or there's, uh, you know, she goes up and there's like subtle scares of she's got the candle and then somehow the candle flames up real, like mm-hmm. like a torch. And it's uh, it's almost like a haunted house movie before it's a possession movie. And then like you get the scene of Ray, Reagan playing with the, the Ouija board and you know, as a, as a the guy, Luigi seen, board? the Luigi, it's a me Luigi board. <laughs> um, but anytime somebody gets a, uh, you know, a Ouija board in a movie, you just, you just go, nope, don't like, I, 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 I <laughs> know all the way away from Ouija boards in real life. I've never done one. Mm-hmm. I, I and they were like, it's not re- It's cool. I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely. Yeah. I've watched enough horror movies. I'm not going to do anything with any Ouija boards, not doing it. You never see a movie where something positive happens <laughs> after talking to somebody on the other end of one of those things, you, you know? Never, you never reconnect with your father with a Ouija board. It's yeah. always like, here's your dad. Oh, by the way, he's getting fingered in the butt right now by Hitler. <laughs> like, what? Uh, and I, I, we could talk about the big scenes. I kind of ma- I made a list of all the stuff that that happens around Reagan and being possessed. So we've got the bed shaking, we've got the candle flaring up in the attic, uh, the the she pees on the rug in front of guests. <laughs> like <laughs> which for me really bothered me because imagine your family has guests over and you're like time to pee and just <laughs> and make eye contact with people <laughs> while doing it. Well, that's to show dominance. That's to show yeah. dominance. So I respect that. <laughs> but if you're doing it as, as a beta, then no. <laughs> but if, if you're, you're doing cowering it, while doing it, <laughs> no, thank you. But if you're alpha marking your territory, then yeah, perfect. <laughs> Fantastic. But just that embarrassing of like paying yourself and like somebody's got to clean that up. Yeah. All your mom's guests are smelling pee now. <laughs> Um, and also I, I wondered like it cuts to like her in the bath bathing, but I, is the party over? <laughs> May I mean, depending on the party, that's when the party actually starts. Do you put out the wet floor sign and just kind of keep Did it you, going? You're like, would anybody like some cheese? Uh, <laughs> we're going to look over here. We're going to look over here now. Uh, and, and is that cheese whiz? <laughs> 
damn, these puns coming in hot. <laughs> Look out, some exorcist based puns, everybody. <laughs> uh, we've got the, the convulsions in the bed, and she's like, fuck me, fuck me. Like <laughs> the transformation of Reagan over this movie from like sweet, innocent little girl with that, you know, pretty face to like scarred up and like it, girl it's you a- meet on Tinder. Yeah, it's it's amazing. No, you don't because she's underage. But uh, <laughs> so it's so weird how long it takes for the mom to convince the priest to be like something's wrong. Because <laughs> there, I wrote it down. And there's she. He's like the the church needs proof. You know, like a language that she's never spoken that she's speaking now. I'm like her face is green <laughs> and scarred up. Like she's it's cold in the room. Like. How how much do you need before you send somebody out? Nope. Until she speaks Klingon, we can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. Until she speaks Dothraki, no. Our hands are tied. Our hands are tied. Uh, we've got the face in the kitchen. This is a movie. This is not a uh, look at your phone while watching movie because there are certain like you get the face of Pazuzu two or three four times in this movie, uh, and th- I that's one of my favorite parts of, of the movie of like. She's walking around in the dark, the mom, and then you just get a second of the face. And it's it's all it doesn't stay long enough for you to be like, I saw that, you know? You go, Did I see that? Was that a yeah. was that a face? Yeah, like I love that. Like I I would steal that technique and if I made my own movie. Just give me it one second subliminal message of of this demon because what a scary thing to just pop out of the dark and then gone. So cause you're you're you almost have to lean over in the theater and be like did we see that same thing you know Mm -hmm. um uh the burke uh the director fell out of the window and his head was turned all the way around we've got the spider walk down the steps with the blood coming out uh grabs the uh psychologist dick i did quite enjoy that scene of her just grabbing a guy's dick (laughs) you know that's what the, the devil has all these powers the demon let me just you know let's cut to the chase and grab grab the dick there that's a great move in wrestling great move in life if you're trying to fight you know just that's i'm really surprised it wasn't more of the go-to in this movie just because just grab the dick yeah just, just grab it twist it, and you can you don't even need a demon in you if you've never twisted a dick Bop it. Felt the power. Bop it, pull twist it. it, pull it, spin it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we've got the, I think I had seen other versions and then I see like the, like a real, like, you know, uncut version you've got the cross and the vagina, like that's 1973. Even I, today, if you did that, people would be breaking the glass to reach for their pearls to clutch them. <laughs> it was a bit much. That was, that was a bit much. Like I'm still religious <laughs> enough where I'm like, Oh, I don't love that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, then she grabs her mom's face to to make her eat her out. So she, she's got a she's comes up as the Joker. It's a full <laughs> face of want to know how I got these scars. <laughs> it's a very vulgar movie, and that's why people were so shocked by it because Linda Blair acted in this. Mm-hmm. And she was an actual child. She wasn't like 18 or 19 playing a Riverdale character. She was <laughs> an actual little girl. Uh, yeah. And just the, and she's, she's masturbating with the cross and then bleeding. So you wonder, is she on her period or is, is, is she hurting herself? Like, and this is like, and it's, I'm glad you're saying all this because I don't think I could bring myself to say it because like I said, I'm not super religious anymore, but I'm still just like, I feel like that's a uh-huh. line, even like, like I said, even today, where it's like, it's not my favorite part of the movie to talk about. Um, I love the- actually, It is I my favorite part of the movie to talk about, actually. <laughs> you're, you're, like, I, you're like, I actually watch this part. I don't know what else we're going to talk about. I have several GIFs on my phone that just loop. <laughs> One of them has incorporated SpongeBob into it. Fuck me. <laughs> but Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, SpongeBob. Um, yeah, just it's so nuts. And I, I'm a, I was raised, I went to Catholic school from kindergarten to senior year. And like, 
I, I am Catholic or a, what, uh, let me say was, but there are things ingrained in you that even I'm like, even I'm like, I'm like, I don't know if possession is real, but I'm also like, maybe, you know, <laughs> like, I like I know enough about possession that I don't fucks with it. Okay. <laughs> That's the thing is like, it's let me just, I, 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 I don't want to play with a, a Luigi board, <laughs> uh, but also like, why, why are we risking this? It's like the same reason I don't skateboard. Uh, <laughs> I don't need to, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> It's like, okay, so this is actually a funny story. Um, have you heard of black craft clothing? Yeah. So there's a lot of cool black craft clothing that I think is neat that I like to wear, but it's so like ingrained in Satanism. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I, I was just like a hoodie that's a little spooky that doesn't have 20 upside down crosses on it. Yeah. Like, like, that's all I want. I don't, I don't need to wear that in the Midwest and then be like, oh, there's the king of hell just yeah. <laughs> in this McDonald's. Like I love like you having like a hoodie with an upside down cross, but then you're like shopping for Funko Pops. <laughs> like two things that don't go together you know and it's like and it's not even like horror funko pops it's like this is my upside down pentagram <laughs> Beezlebub hoodie that i'm wearing and also i'd like my disney funkos <laughs> uh yeah i i i'd love the band ghost and mm -hmm. the it's if google the band ghost if you've not heard of them but their lead singer is a demonic pope and every new album they get a different pope and it's I, I have a couple shirts from them, but I'm like, I'm like, am I going to like my wife's family's house? Because I can't <laughs> you can't wear the ghost shirt. You know, you got to like pick and choose. Oh, is this like a hang around friends day? Cool. I can wear the the D, the devil pope shirt. You know, <laughs> is this a is this a formal event? I should not wear the devil pope shirt. Yeah, I will wear the nice devil pope. Uh, <laughs> her head goes all the way around uh and saying your cunting daughter I, I i as far as i know this is the only movie that says cunting like it like uses it at that phrase it doesn't roll off the tongue either that's no. a very, that's a very harsh phrase to what, try to what's work the it phrase gavin cunting okay <laughs> 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 it's a very it's a very tough phrase to try to work in a normal conversation um we have karis and her and she's like hey, oh the calling back to the scene when the, he's in the subway and the guy's like help an old altar boy father like this devil gets in his head <laughs> of you know this demon of like his mom dies and she's like i'm in here like really playing psychological games with the young priest yeah, your mother sucks cocks in hell. And like, like if you tell that to somebody and you're not possessed, like that's yeah. gonna that's gonna shake you to your core a little bit. Be like, what do you what? <laughs> what is she doing? She's alive. <laughs> I do love uh, and maybe I watch this, I don't remember, or just you see a super cut of edited for TV movies. Mm -hmm. And like the my one of my favorites is she says, Your mother sucks cocks in hell, but on TV it's your mother so socks that smell. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're watching on cable and you know this demon has possessed this little girl and to get in the to the mind of the young priest she says your mother so socks that smell. And if you didn't know there was an alternate version you're just thinking man this guy really is invested in his mother's socks. <laughs> That's it, it, that is almost better yeah it's almost better just because it is so weirdly specific yeah that targets us be like oh that that's the one that cuts deep my mother <laughs> does so so how do you sew a sock that already smells that's what <laughs> <laughs> it's pre pre-stunk already <laughs> be like yeah i'm I poop on the yarn and yeah. I, then, then, then I sew it. Yeah. It's also weird that like they've attempted to clean this movie up for TV. Like I, you could cut out the, you know, the cross masturbation scene, of course, yeah. but it's like, of course it's, it's like when they would show the Sopranos on TV, like, what are we doing here? <laughs> this is, or like the casino, you know, one of my favorites is uh, forget you, you mother forgetter. 
like of, come on like one of my favorites i uh, you know how you have the your, your mother so socks mm-hmm. one of my go-to my favorite edit of all time is scarface they mm-hmm. were the, there's a tv edit of scarface and there's a part where he gets off the boat but from cuba into miami and they're like how'd you get that scar eating pussy mm-hmm. uh and in the tv version it's how'd you get that scar eating pineapple <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of these things is not like the other you know how you just cut yourself eating pineapple yeah just <laughs> when you just face first into a pineapple yeah. peel and all I don't like that you got the pineapple on the pizza, man. Stab. <laughs> I got two things in this world, my balls and my pineapple. I don't break them for either of them. <laughs> this town's a chicken just waiting to get plucked. <laughs> just waiting to get pineapple. <laughs> what? Uh, we get the first attempt, uh, attempt at an exorcism, the holy water. Uh, it turns out to be tap water. Uh she has helped me ridden on her stomach. Uh, she spits out uh, on Marin, the the old priest, uh, spits out what, what is vomit, of course. But man, did it look like baby shit. <laughs> like, just can you imagine just trying to focus and say the, pr- the prayers and the ritual and then you get just a big, thick, runny shit on your face? And yeah. like he just keeps going. That's a that's a champ. I mean, I imagine in in Exorcist training camp that they go <laughs> go to, they just have all these di- different hazards. <laughs> They're like, all right, now we're gonna do one. If you're doing Exorcist on a dirt bike, all right, we're <laughs> we're gonna kick some dirt up on you. You gotta keep going, all right. You just want somebody to do a sick skateboard trick. <laughs> keep going. How many times does that have to happen? that you eventually just brush it off <laughs> like it's like a, a a parent that's on their third kid and a puke on the shoulder is nothing now but the first time it happens you're like oh my god you know yeah but yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just puke get over it it's just puke i gotta get this demon out <laughs> yeah uh her head turns around uh again you get the the demon in her face, Pazuzu. Uh, you get levitation. You get the then she hits uh, Karis, uh, the the young priest with the double axe handle. <laughs> uh, and I I just had to because I know that move from wrestling, so I had to throw in. She hit him with the double axe handle, and then can you imagine if she got stone cold stunned or something? Just, That's how the head got turned around. Is she got stunned? <laughs> she was selling. She just got. <laughs> The power of Christ compels you. My God, my God, my God. She was uh, every Asian wrestler that spits the green mist. <laughs> Is that the great Muda? <laughs> it's the Muda. Oh, my God, that's a cross on her trunks. <laughs> my God, she is possessed. They got her. <laughs> they got her. Uh, she talks in, in uh, Karis's mom's voice. That's And that's like a... You have to set this that up of like he loves his mom so much and it's torturous for for him to not be, I think, in, in New York City with her. This lady has got no business living on her own, but it's mm. like and it just has weighed on him so heavily. And eventually, you know, she dies. And it's like, let's I, I love how they send in the priest that's one is emotionally uh uh, not weak but uh vulnerable because his mom just died and then you send in the oldest guy to do the job <laughs> like he's got 500 under his belt this is just yeah. another day for him like yeah it's it's so weird how like we've chosen the past couple presidents to make them the oldest people possible and then every pope is somehow 75 years old <laughs> like i get there's there's like wisdom that comes with experience but could we make them a little more spry? Like, Can we, I'd like maybe, you know, like a cool Pope, maybe, maybe like a, a, a Pope on TikTok. Like, I don't know. <laughs> well, what, know, what, I, what I always found so funny about electing these, because I grew up Mormon and in the Mormon church, like our, our Pope is like the prophet, like the prophet who's like chosen mm-hmm. by God to like receive revelation or whatever. And they they choose, I swear to like, like an 85 year old man every time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't, 
they're they're not going to choose a young person because a young person might have different ideas but mm -hmm. it's like we just need somebody to keep the status quo like when you're 85 you're you're not going to discover any new things about yourself like like you are you are so set in your ways and it is just hardened over like that you you're not going to find anything new about yourself you're not going to if, you, if you're 85 years old and you haven't like gay people your entire life you're not going to wake up at 85 years old and a half and be like actually <laughs> i think maybe i was wrong the whole time no you yeah. gotta keep the you gotta keep the status quo well it's you know in 20 years we, we will have uh, religious leaders that are like we should tweet you know <laughs> they tweet let now but like that's the thing they're going to push is let us, tweets and we tweet to the lord lord <laughs> hear our tweet can i get a we tweet <laughs> um it kills uh the old priest and it's like the whole the whole movie he's taking pills or whatever and like did you know i i'll read it in the facts uh that i've coming up but like this dude is like 40 and yeah. he's literally 40 and they made him age because i'm like man this guy plays up the feeble old guy really well yeah it was uh max, max von side out and he was actually on the last season of game of well, some of the last seasons of game of thrones and he was age appropriate on mm -hmm. gig and like an old man, but yeah, he's only 40 in this. So he is like, they, they, they as old as him up mm -hmm. and he uh, did a really good job. And usually when you get like a, let's age them up, you can be like, that's a young person playing an old person. But for some reason, the makeup clicked. It looked like if it was not shot in HD or whatever, like I'm like, this looks real. Yeah, and he looks. I think he just looked older to begin with. Yeah, and so that he's got that, that Arn Anderson syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like one of the kids from like I don't know Stranger Things. <laughs> it's, it's not like Dustin. It's like I'm I'm an eighty. <laughs> uh, I I do. I kept because I'm so. By the way, uh, the first time we're talking about this, we should next season maybe talk about covering scary movie either one or two. Okay. But the, I think Scary Movie 1, didn't they parody this pretty heavily? Uh, it was Scary Movie 2. Okay, scary, and, scary. and the yeah. priest is played by... I'm trying to think of his name the whole time because I was confusing the two. Uh, uh, I know you're pulling it up. Yeah, I'll pull it up, Jamie. Let me... <laughs> he, he was the star of uh, John Carpenter's Vampires. <laughs> that, that does me no good. I know. <laughs> James Woods. I, I thought of it on my own. It's James Woods. Okay. And so he, I think in Scary Movie 2, he played the priest and they look so similar that just I would look at my phone or something, look up. I'm like, that's James Woods in The Exorcist. <laughs> I've, uh, I've watched hey, one uh... movie so much that it's the parody has affected the real movie. Yeah, when they just spit the when they spit the pea soup on them for four minutes straight, you know, like, <laughs> it's hilarious. It's so good. And my favorite part is when the priest offers him his little hand. He goes, "Go <laughs> grab my little hand. It's Take my strong my hand. hand. It's my strong hand. You can't use his other hand." So uh, the old priest is dead, and somehow the uh, you know Reagan the demon has has gotten loose. And then Karis just proceeds to whoop some ass, <laughs> like just like like the 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 demon has resorted to dick grabbing. He's like, I'm just gonna beat you, <laughs> and then gets uh the the demon inside him and jumps out the window. Yeah, that's a pretty boss move. Where it's like, oh, if I can't get you out, I'll just kill the little girl. <laughs> yeah, I'll just whatever. I don't care. And that's a it's a very violent end, yeah. Where because he hits those steps hard, yeah. Well, and it's the second uh, death of those steps. Like mm -hmm. earlier in the movie, somebody falls down the steps, uh, and it's and, and I'm I'm wondering like, so if Karis dies, does that demon die with it, with him, or is it just now free to roam the world again? <laughs> I think the implication is that, and I've never seen any of the, any of the sequels. Um, I have, and I, do, I again, I need to, I need to watch a movie a couple times before it sinks in. You know? Yeah, I would assume that that's the goal: is that once the demon's inside you, and then then you die, it, it dies with you, or, which or is, at very least, it's not in her. I think you know. Yeah, 
And like, I don't, but then again, it would have been a bummer if he gets the demon into him, jumps out the window, and then the, he dies. And then the demon's like, all right, going back to the little girl. Yeah, like <laughs> going back to Reagan. There's a lot of variables here that they are not taking into account. Like, what if it just goes back? Yeah, I, nobody ever thought of that. Uh, but yeah, those steps are kind of, kind of iconic, you know? Mm hmm. So the, the scene that bothers a lot of people and bothered me isn't so much the supernatural stuff, which is very disturbing, and it's supposed to be. The scenes where she's being tested in the doctor's office, mm -hmm. and they have that weird blood test where Not they put going it, in her neck. Yeah, where they put it in her neck, and then they pull it out and just, like, squirts blood. That bothers so many people, including me, who I don't have a huge fear of needles, but I don't love them. They Again, are it's, it's me skateboarding. Yeah, I, like, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't I don't mind needles, but mm -hmm. I I'm I'm not going out of my way. I don't that, that's why I was like, you people enjoy your heroin. I I don't I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't I don't know how you do it. I don't know how yeah. you do it, but it is not for me. Uh yeah, I I think people get squeamish about that stuff because it's like whenever I see somebody get like not even hit in the penis but like something <laughs> pierces like any i just imagine that stuff happening to me or like uh somebody has a teeth thing somebody will like uh break it just show like a tooth chipped or like even an eyeball mm -hmm. we all just imagine that's happening to us eye stuff doesn't bother me as much but anything with like teeth uh, in the last episode, you mentioned your recurring dream about like being with Michael Myers. Like I have the recurring teeth falling out dreams. I have that one too. Yeah. So it's just like, well, I'm, I'm at school. Where'd all my teeth go? Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, anything with like teeth, like teeth pulling or like chipping teeth, even mm -hmm. that scene in American history X, when he's just like bite the curb by when he bites the curb and you, and you just see like, like, like the teeth make brief contact with the curb. Yep. You're like, no. Yep. Just that just, you could just show me the teeth touch in the cement. And I, I know teeth aren't supposed to go there and it's very <laughs> cringe to me, but people are very worried are, are very disturbed by those medical test scenes. Like they, they're disturbed by everything else too, but, but that really bothers people because just needles and necks, blood squirting. It's very disturbing. Also, there is a very famous story with the technician, uh, the actor that plays the technician. Mm -hmm. And then that scene is actually like he was a murderer. Yeah, he was. Uh, it's one of my facts that I have here, if I could find it. Uh, a real life suspected serial killer makes an appearance in the film. Paul uh, Bateson, a real life x-ray technician played the role of the radiologist assistant in the scene where reagan uh, is having a car cart carded and a, okay she got that she has the procedure is what i'm going to call it it's an angiogram sure okay uh, <laughs> i watch Grey's anatomy i'm just naming things <laughs> authorities suspected him of being a serial killer that had been targeting gay men in the years of uh, 1977 and 78 and wrapping their chopped up remains in plastic bags. Uh, these were known as the bag murders. <laughs> I'm not la laughing at them, but just calling it the bag murders just seems yeah. very like, there's nothing a little more creative we could have gone with. There's the, the, the bag murders. Nowadays, they'd be the canvas bag murders. Yeah. Because everybody's so woke. Everybody got saved <laughs> the planet, whatever. You know what? I put. 500 gallons of diesel in my truck <laughs> oh we're good uh, somehow we found a way to to make the exorcist podcast <laughs> political uh, <laughs> well listen uh all i know is the demons are living in the liberals <laughs> <laughs> you gotta cast them out with more guns um but yeah so that scene really bothers people and it, it, it bothered me there is this idea that the film was cursed so yep. that, there was an episode of Shudder's Cursed Films about how the Exorcist was cursed and how Linda Blair had a lot of issues mm -hmm. uh, in her life with like drugs and alcohol following the movie and things like that. So she's cleaned up now and she seems to be fine. Yeah. But it was just a very hard thing to shake when you're a child actor. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, and she, I read that she was getting threats way after the movie came out. 
mm-hmm. from, you know, of course, that's what a, a good Christian would do is threaten somebody. Yeah, you know, it's what the <laughs> Jesus said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you with threats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this one, it was the first horror movie uh, to be nominated for the Academy Award for Best Picture, uh, one of 10 adapted screenplay uh, or one of uh, the Academy Awards for uh, which it was nominated uh, winning for Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Sound. It was the highest grossing R-rated horror film until 2017 uh, with the release of It. I Didn't Linda Blair win an award for this? I thought she won like an Academy Award and they took it away. because uh, they, they, Maybe. I don't know. I, I, I know that she won some award that they, that they took away because it turned out that there was a voice actress who did all of the demon voices, uh, all the Reagan lines with the demon word dubbed mm-hmm. over by just this woman who was uncredited and her way to get, get the voice. So was like, she would just smoke unfiltered cigarettes mm-hmm. and just really get deep into it. Mercedes uh, McCambridge went to extreme lengths for the voice of the demon. She provided the vocalizations of the demon. And in order to perfect the distorted voice, she actually gave up sobriety she chain smoked cigarettes, drank heavily, and even ate raw eggs to master the satanic voice. She was also physically bound to a chair with torn sheets by arms, legs, ankles, and wrists to achieve a more realistic sound. That is dedication. And it's Just... it is so it's weird, it's unsettling to hear the different voices that come out of this mm-hmm. child. And one of the scariest parts for me was when the old priest walks in the house, the young priest is there, and you just hear a growl from upstairs. Like, it knows that there's <laughs> about to be a fight. And that was, to me, one of the most unsettling things. Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing that I find interesting is that she gave up sobriety. I feel, if you're giving it up that easy, you're just like, well. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I if, if I have to, and like, no, you don't have to. Like, but I guess if I have to. I've already started. <laughs> yeah. already, I'm eating cigarettes and drinking Jim Beam. Okay. Could, couldn't you say drink like hot sauce? I don't, I don't, you know. No, nope, I'm not a voice done. actor. You, I don't know. So <laughs> already done. We're good. We're good. I am, I am eating rocks. <laughs> uh, aspects of uh, William Peter Blatty's uh, novel were inspired by the 1949 exorcism performed on an anonymous young boy known as uh, Roland Doe. Doe's family became convinced that the boy's aggressive behavior was attributed to demonic possession and called upon uh, the services of several Catholic priests to perform uh, an exorcism. It was one of the three exorcisms to have been sanctioned by the Catholic Church in the United States at the time. Uh, It's maybe later uh, debunked and dismissed by paranormal skeptics as uh, some of the stuff the kid had just could have done to himself and acting out. Uh, and despite the relatively minor changes that were made, uh, the film depicts everything that could be verified by those who were involved. In order to make the film, William Friedkin weakened, uh, was <laughs> uh, allowed access to the diaries of the priests involved, as well as the doctors and nurses. He also discussed events with Doe's uh, aunt in great detail. Uh, Friedkin had said that he does not believe that the head spinning actually occurred. Yeah, I I know that people claim a lot of supernatural things, but if your head spins around supernatural, I feel like you're 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 dead. I, I think that you're just dead if your head spins around. Yeah, you almost kill your own host. You know. Yeah, you can't levitation shit like that. Like. It's not going to harm you in the long run. It's mm-hmm. just spooky, big lies. But if you're making somebody's head twist around, like you're breaking their head. Like, like, yeah. the, like you're, you're breaking their spine. Uh, Island, Eileen Dietz, who was 15 uh, years older than Blair, stood in for the crucifix scene, uh, the fist fight with Ca- uh, Father Karras, and other scenes that were too violent or disturbing for Blair to perform. She also appears as the face of Pazuzu. So Pazuzu was a lady face. And I think uh, that's not really said in the movie, maybe that the demon is called Pazuzu. Yeah, I I, I don't know. Did they say it's Pazuzu in the movie or no? I don't remember, but the stuff that I'm reading in hindsight is not really saying that. But, you know, they say it, they clarify. It's probably said in the novel a bunch. So when you were growing up as as a Catholic um, in early childhood, 
was the exorcist like the most scary evil movie you could watch or no i didn't even see it when i was a kid i saw it later as an adult but even like you again it's one of those movies that you can see without seeing Mm -hmm. so if you even see like clips of it it would scare me yeah for sure and it's it's that thing that's ingrained in me as a as a former catholic of like you know we can stop a home invader or we can stop you know uh it's it's like a a clown it is not real Mm -hmm. but there's always that little hint of me that's like you could be possessed by an evil thing yeah so even if i don't fully subscribe to that i'm again it's like i'm not gonna mess with that you know yeah and i remember going to like the the video stores growing up and seeing like the box of the exorcist and like being too afraid to like look at the box oh yeah Um, yeah just like i don't know this seems like i don't want to i want to open this portal i don't want to open it um i did a video on my channel about like hilarious one star reviews and like the amount of people in the year of 2022 who still leave like one star exorcist reviews just about like how it's the most evil thing in the entire world and how it's made by demons. Like they're still talking about Mm -hmm. it. Well, and the thing is the, the demon loses at the end. Yeah. Um, and, and that, that cursed, uh, cursed films on shutter. I think they talk a lot about this, but William uh, Friedkin was not the nicest director, Gavin. No, he like hit people and like, I think it one didn't he fire a gun? He fired blanks uh, without warning on the set to elicit shock from uh, Jason Miller, who played Karis for a take and told Miller that the pea soup wouldn't hit him in the chest, would hit him in the chest rather than in the face. And yeah, you can watch a clip of the, the dude's a pro actor. He rolls with it and doesn't break, but it's like, if you, if you expected something to hit your chest and now your face is covered, mm-hmm. it's, Again, may, maybe I understand that one, but I don't understand shooting a gun, whether blanks or not, right by a guy's ear. Uh, I know well, uh, uh, Blair and her uh, her stunt double actually got hurt in like the scene of like her flopping on the bed. Yeah, it, it's it's you have to have a safe word of be, like if I say potato, that's actually hurting me. You know, like, yeah. Because if you're acting like it's hurting, they'd be like, yeah, this is great. This is she's doing really well, you know? Yeah, I think Ellen Bernstein, who plays the mom, I think she also got got hurt doing some stunts and just Mm -hmm. all all kinds of people getting getting hurt all over the set. And then just like mysterious. I think there were some mysterious deaths and things that were like associated around the set as well. Yeah. And some of those uh, I I would urge you to check out if you have uh, Shudder or if I, I have AMC Plus, which includes Shudder uh but that's a good curse films is great but then some of these movies i'm like oh this is a stretch the, that that yeah. is cursed but it's still it's a you know these are documentaries about films that are iconic and uh we like so it's still fun to watch them have you started watching curse season uh have you have you watched uh curse film season two i watched the wizard of oz and cannibal holocaust and uh th- there's one that's heavily uh, influenced uh, by the Manson family, right? I think so. I only watched, I watched Wizard of Oz, which I enjoyed. And then we started Rosemary's Baby and I was like, this is boring. That's this the is... one that's, that's uh, Manson. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, this is kind of, this is kind of boring. Uh, <laughs> this is like not <laughs> as good as the first. I, after a while, you're like, we're really stretching this as like what a, what a cursed film is. Yeah. Um. So but that's just a, a fun aside because I watched the Wizard of Oz. I was like, okay, okay, and I was like, this is kind of boring for every, all the other ones. Yeah, um, we got tubular bells, the theme from The Exorcist. Like that, mm-hmm. nothing really, like score wise, stood out besides that. But you can like this is one of the tubular bells is one of those that if you're familiar with horror, this movie, you could be like, that's The Exorcist song, you know. Yeah, it's not as iconic as like the Halloween theme, mm-hmm. but it, but if you hear it and you have like a passing familiarity with The Exorcist, like you'll be like, yeah, that's the theme from The Exorcist. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on the characters or anything? I have a bunch of facts that I kind of pulled up too. So, um, like I said, it's just a very well made movie. Mm-hmm. It's just a very it's slow. It that's sl- when I want like there's a lot they had to build the world and I get it. But this, it's like a over two hour movie. And, and I, th- I think, you know, I always 
have a problem with people and they're like, it's a two hour movie and it's an older movie, but I'm also like times were different. So you just have to put it in context, but then I'm, I'm watching this one. I'm like, man, this is, it seems <laughs> slow, but there are things that happen throughout the movie that move it along as far as like demonic possession and stuff like that. All those things that I listened that happened to Reagan, that's not mm-hmm. all at once that happens, but I, even I felt it was a little slow for me and I'm I, a guy that can enjoy a slow burn. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I I enjoyed all the characters and like those those relationships and like the unraveling of the mystery. I think being in the theater when I watched it for the first time really helped because mm-hmm. it, it kept your focus. I couldn't just be dicking around on my phone. Yeah, like and, I've been known to do. And it's you know, the more you hear about a movie and you know the demystification of a movie. I'm sure back in 1973, this was the scariest. And I st- I do this is a scary movie for sure. Oh yeah. But back in the day, like if you never seen anything like this uh, and it, it, now we're a victim of there's so many possession movies and so many movies that are similar to this, that sometimes when you see the original, you're like, Oh, and then you realize what everything had copied, you know? And that's why I, I keep saying it's just a good movie. It's yeah. It's yeah. a good film because the character that even if you're not as scared by it, cause it's not a very jump scary movie. It's much more a- atmospheric at least you can be like well it didn't scare me because i can kind of see what they were going for the effects Mm -hmm. aren't holding up as much but the story and the core is still there so i can appreciate it Mm -hmm. as a as just a a, a piece of art yeah um the scenes where father karis visits his mother in the in bellevue is the seemingly i don't know what you'd call it like a a low rent mental hospital. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, those scenes actually contained real mental patients and some were recorded using hidden cameras. But can any of them drive? Well, somebody must have been giving him <laughs> lessons, Dr. He Lewis. Doing, he was doing all right last night. <laughs> uh, the movie made people nauseous that they hand they had to hand out bags uh, to vomit in uh, with every movie ticket. What Again, this movie had so much negative hype that ends up being positive hype oh yeah of like oh people are passing out there i i shit my pants it was so scary like (laughs) it wouldn't if somebody was like i shit my pants because this was so scary wouldn't you be like if as a horror fan wouldn't you be like i gotta see this could could you imagine if if people were saying about a movie that was out now that was like pants shittingly scary (laughs) yeah and we'd be like no i don't think so be like dude did you see well, did you see jigsaw <laughs> well they with paranormal activity that was they were showing you know the marketing campaign of here's people in the theaters being scared you know yeah and that was really good viral marketing mm-hmm. because and it, they they didn't show trailers they just showed people in the dark be like oh my god there's an actual ghost in this movie yeah like that that kind of stuff gets people out to the to the theater and, and anytime there's like a possession movie there's always like hype of like, oh yeah, I think there was some darkness on the set. That really sells a movie, you know? Yeah. Whereas or if you say based on a true story, it's mm-hmm. like, was it? Was yeah. this loosely based on a true story that somebody once told? Yeah, it was uh and yeah, yeah, I love it inspired by a true story. You could be like, I I watched Star Wars and I uh, saw a little creature back there. So I wrote this whole movie about the guy that hangs out about, behind Jabba the Hutt, you know. It's like the Nick Swartzen joke where he's like, I just want to I just want to do a movie that is based on a true story and it's Transformers and be like, when did that happen? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, we, the pig squeals were part of the exorcist, exorcist sound design. Uh, when the demon is finally exercised from her body, the sound excuse me you hear uh is is pigs being led to slaughter oh good That's like a there, there's a lot of like i don't know how uh much you are into like black metal which i am not but you hear <laughs> you hear music and you're like this is just pigs grunting like it's <laughs> it's unsettling this is just somebody hitting a stick against a wet tree and uh, it's and it's number one in sweden it's a yeah it's a clown uh <laughs> hitting a baseball bat against a keg it's music <laughs> it's a symphony um let me look and see if there's other uh yeah uh max von Seidau, right i'm saying that correctly i think so he was 44 
uh, and I'm seeing this picture of him. I think it's James Woods. It can't be for sure. <laughs> can't be for sure. It might be James Woods. Uh, and then we didn't talk about the detective that's kind of in the movie too, kind of trying to solve. I, I, like he's not a nothing character, but it's they probably. I don't. May, I'm trying to think. They could cut him out, and it wouldn't make a difference like to me. Get, at least is he gonna is he gonna arrest the demon? Is solve he the demon be- case. I, again, I'd have to see this movie a bunch more to tell you if they needed that detective, but they're, you know, and I'm sure somebody's like, this is the perfect movie. It's They don't need to change a thing. And maybe you're right. It's just it has not been my movie, even though I think we both agree this is a good movie. It's great. I, it holds up. It's uh, a classic. Anybody who's a horror fan needs to watch The Exorcist to just fully appreciate how far possession movies demonic movies have come uh but yeah it is uh it, it, it it's a solid piece of american history well and, and if you're a horror fan there are certain movies that you like i i i go through certain horror films and i'm like you know i don't really want to watch this but this is part of the I don't know that you have to see this movie if you're a horror fan to at least say you mm. have seen it, you know? Yeah. And, um, and and it can suck, but you have to like see it. Yeah. Um. So w- we talked about this on the Halloween episode last, last time, but this is on again, the list of scariest movies ever. Uh, would you say Gavin, that this is one of the scariest movies ever? Yeah, I well, a lot of people say it is the scariest movie of all time, mm-hmm. not just but people say that like this is there's never been a scarier movie since 1973. And I know that every year they've been doing the science of the scare where they like test heart rate, heart, yeah, heart rate and stuff. I think the exorcist ranks fairly high on there, mm-hmm. or it did, but. I don't know. I, I think there's been movies that I've seen that that, that, that are scarier. I, I may lose some street cred. I think the movie Sinister is just the fucking scariest thing in the entire world. But I, <laughs> when, again, I didn't ask you about Sinister, Gavin. I asked you about The Exorcist. I know. I think The Exorcist could be considered one of the scariest movies of all time, yes. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, n- no doubt. Like, if anybody would say this is not scary, I would, uh, okay, cool. You're brave like this is enjoy your death metal <laughs> yeah your pigs grunting also we didn't talk about the the scene when the the old priest shows up and is outside the window like that is you can that's the cover to the movie but also if you didn't say the exorcist you could be like that is from the exorcist yeah the silhouette like there's just some iconic shots in this mm-hmm. um finally uh i asked you with halloween if you like The Exorcist, what movies would you recommend other people check out? I think you could really go any uh, any sort of ghost or possession movie. I think The Conjuring. Mm-hmm. I, I think if you like The Exorcist, you, you would love The Conjuring. I think just the whole Conjuring universe is actually pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you would you definitely like The Conjuring. I think uh, The Exorcism of, of Emily Rose. Yep. Basically, basically any kind of exorcism movie is going to be good. And then uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other. I would say Hereditary. Hereditary, the app, yeah, because that, I, yeah, that's a good possession movie. And, and it's a newer one, too. Yeah, and it's it's not the same old, oh, the power of Christ compels you. Like, those aren't terrible, but it's, you know, you've seen, if you see enough exorcist type movies, you see that scene, you know? I also think uh, the movie Blade, uh, just <laughs> just just because Blade's a good movie, just check out uh, Blade with Wesley Snipes. If you if you like the Exorcist, you'll definitely like this Vampire Hunter. I, I'm trying to find the movie. I'm I'm googling. I think uh, it was called The Last Exorcism. And yeah, th- that one I would recommend. The Taking of Deborah Logan. Mm-hmm. Um trying to maybe th- some of these lists have paranormal activity amityville horror has never been a movie that i you know now that is a movie that is fucking boring <laughs> okay we can and maybe we might cover it on this podcast but uh and i know it's a classic everybody loves it but i again i can't i maybe i need to rewatch it 
it's very yeah. boring. Just a, it, it, did you like a family being being attacked by flies and a voice saying <laughs> "Get out" for two hours? Um, and that they had the Exorcist three. I've seen that movie, but I, I'd have to rewatch it again. And I've never seen that, but I but I have heard it's good. Um, and yeah, so that was kind of the. I think we hit the big ones on there. So, um, yeah, I would say. If you've not seen The Exorcist, I don't know why you listen to this whole podcast, but uh, <laughs> or why you're listening at all, really. That's true, but uh, yeah, I think that's about it, Gavin. Yeah, I think it's a. I think The Exorcist is a classic movie. I think that to really appreciate where the horror genre has gone, and far as like the supernatural realm, you owe it to yourself to watch The Exorcist. And I know we try. We're going to try to make this uh, podcast six hours and sixty six minutes long. <laughs> I just, I don't think we're going to be able to stretch it. I, I, I think that we just, uh, but if you play this podcast backwards, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Also, we're pressing just this episode on limited edition vinyl so that you can play it backwards. With our blood. With a, God, that's so expensive. And the vinyl production, it's, it's really halted right now. Well, I, uh, I will raise uh, my cup of pea soup to The Exorcist. Absolutely. Exorcist, you are a classic film. This has been They're Coming to Get You. Barbara! They're coming to get you. They're coming for you, Barbara. They're coming to get you.